Hello everyone, this is Dr. Shyam. I welcome you all to my channel, Dr. Pharma. And on this video, I'll be discussing on chemical mediators of inflammation. So we'll see what is chemical mediators. So suppose this is the cell. Now, in the cell, or you can say inside the cells, there are some chemicals. And these chemicals are released when the cell are attacked by some kind of foreign microorganism or you can say foreign particle or you can say stimuli so this stimuli can be the injurious agent or you can say any kind of etiological agent which are causing damage to our cell and you know that when the cell is attacked by some kind of foreign particles it is causing the cell injury so what is happening here when the cell is actually getting attacked by by some type of stimuli then these chemicals are getting released which are present inside the cell and these chemicals are causing the or mediating the process of inflammation that is why it is called chemical mediators of inflammation now uh, as you know that inflammation is the local response of living mammalian tissue towards cell injury i have discussed uh, this topic uh, in detail you can go and see the previous videos regarding inflammation so how can you define the chemical mediators we can define chemical mediators as chemical mediators are you can say chemical mediators are what i said the chemicals are present inside the cells are endogenous chemicals or you can say endogenous chemical substance which mediate the process of inflammation right so as i said you because these chemicals are present inside the cell that is why it is called endogenous chemical substance remember that if anything present inside the cell it is called endogenous if any substance are present outside the cell it is called exogenous that may be any chemical substance or anything okay now that mediate the process of inflammation means it can mediate both the process of inflammation that may be acute inflammation or chronic inflammation so this is this is the definition of chemical mediators of inflammation now see the properties of chemical mediators if you talk about the properties now there are two types of chemical mediators one you can say cell derived mediators and second one is plasma protein derived mediators so when the when the chemicals or these chemical mediators are released from the cell that maybe you can say which are stored in the granules uh, 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 granules or the cells it is called cell derived mediators examples you can say like uh, histamines which are vasoactive amines histamines then you can say prostaglandins leukotrienes there are ample of examples of there are cytokines like tumor necrosis factor interleukins interferons platelet activating factor and you can say free radicals so so all those are cell derived mediators second one is plasma protein derived mediators it means that this chemical mediators are released from the plasma protein and the uh, you can also called as plasma protease the plasma protein derived mediators also known as plasma protease and so uh, remember that this plasma protein derived mediators are mostly synthesized in the liver or you can say liver is the major organ where the plasma protein derived mediators are getting released and they require activation and examples you can say in this is you know kinin system fibrinolytic system clotting system and the complement system are the examples of plasma protein derived mediators we'll see at the end of the class the interrelationship between those system then the next one is the chemical mediators are released or you can say they are released 
in response to stimuli. We had seen in the definition, uh, like when the cell is attacked by some on some stimuli, then these chemical mediators are getting released and which are mediating the process of inflammation. So that is stimuli. What is this stimuli? So that may be your you can say the injurious agent, or you can say the etiological agent which is causing damage to the cell, or you can say damaged and dead cells. Or we can say the chemical mediators itself, it can be the mediator itself, can be the stimuli which are causing the activation of the chemical mediators. So remember that the chemical mediators are released in response to some kind of stimuli. Now in this case, uh, understand one point, point is there, like suppose, suppose uh, due to the stimuli, the vasoactive amines are getting activated, suppose. Suppose it's histamine. Now what is happening here? So this is your primary mediator. So if, if first, at first if the vasoactive amines are getting activated, this is called primary or we can say initial chemical mediator. Okay. Now this histamine can activate the other chemical mediator. Suppose, suppose I am taking examples. You can say prostaglandins. Suppose. Or you can say leukotrienes. So this chemical mediators are getting activated by which one by initial mediator or you can say the primary mediator so that is why this becomes your secondary mediator this becomes your secondary mediator i hope it is clear i will repeat once again as you know that we are discussing about chemical mediators i'm telling that the chemical mediators are released in response to stimuli as i as we have seen here now suppose that the histamines are the chemical are, are the first mediators which are getting released suppose now what is happening here this histamine can stimulate the other chemical mediators i am taking example of prostaglandin this can stimulate the the other chemical mediators example prostaglandin so this becomes your initial mediator or you can say primary mediator and that that becomes your secondary mediator now if you talk about the action of this secondary mediator it is it is similar to initial mediator or it can be opposite to the initial mediator. Suppose if, if you can say that if it is doing the vasoconstriction, they can also do the vasoconstriction. If the primary mediator is doing the vaso, uh, you know, vasoconstriction, they can do the vasodilation. So the action may be similar to the primary mediator or it can be opposite to the primary mediator. So that is your second properties of chemical mediator. Moving to the next one. The chemical mediators act on different target, different target, chemical mediators act on different target cells. Uh, you can say that, the, see, see in, in case, in this case, I mean to say that those, the cells are releasing the mediators, the chemical mediators are acting on that cell only or it can act on different cells also and their actions can be similar on that cells or it can be different to the cells okay so you can say that they act on different targets action range of action means what is happening when the chemical mediators are releasing in the body so you can say there may be a increased vascular permeability See this, uh, I have discussed in the acute inflammation. You can see the video of acute inflammation. In that case, you can understand in detail what they are doing or what, what, what is the function of chemical mediators. They are also uh, causing vasodilation and then chemotaxis, fever, pain you can say redness and it can cause the tissue damage also so these are the actions of the chemical mediators that is they will increase the permeability of the of the blood vessels they can cause the vasodilation they can cause the chemotaxis fever pain and at the end they can also cause the 
tissue damage so whatever the you know whatever the signs of inflammation is there because you know that uh, the same will be for chemical mediator also because the chemical mediator is the cause for the inflammation because the release of chemical mediator the inflammation is taking place okay Now, if you talk about the span or lifespan of uh, chemical mediators, they have such a lifespan and they are inactivated by or they are removed by inactivation of enzymes. Or by antioxidants. Or by regulatory proteins. or you can say they can decay spontaneously after release so as you know that they are uh, they will mediate the process of inflammation that is why they are having the shorter lifespan and it are they are getting removed or they are removed how by inactivation of enzymes by antioxidants by regulatory proteins and by decaying spontaneously so these are the these are the properties of chemical mediators so now talking about the plasma derived uh, chemical mediators as i said you it consists of clotting fibrinolytic, fibrinolytic kinin and complement system if we talk about the interrelationship between those systems you will see that factor 12 that is a clotting factor the name of the factor 12 is hesman factor hesman factor so when it comes in the contact, they will f uh, the factor 12A is getting activated and when the factor 12A is getting activated, they are going to activate the clotting system and then first one is clotting system. So when the clotting system is getting activated, the fibrin is splitting into fibrin product and when the fibrin has been split, uh, splitted into the fibrin products, they will cause increased vascular permeability they will cause the chemotaxis for leukocytes and as you know that they can cause or act as an anticoagulant activity. Now moving to the next one, first of all we will discuss about kinin system. Uh, uh, the kinin system, in case of kinin system, uh, there is a formation of the bradykinin from calicarin and this is formed from pre-calicarin. After that this bradykinin will cause the smooth muscle contraction and then they will also cause the uh, increase in the vascular permeability they can cause dilation of blood vessels leading to vessel dilation and they can also lead to pain so that is your the features or the actions of kinin system moving to the fibrinolytic system uh, after the plasminogen activator you know uh, uh, the plasmin is leading to the uh, uh, fibrinolysis that is a breakdown of fibrin and they will enter into the complement system complement system is very 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 important for this because complement system uh, uh, is also acting as a complement to the antibody and there are several pathway in the complement system as you can see here lectin pathway is there alternative pathway is there classical pathway is there and all those will have some factors permeability factors and then mac the mac means membrane attack complex see uh, all those are important but complement system what they will do i'll just tell you the function of complement system uh, uh, they can cause the chemo chemotaxis inflammation and very most important thing is that phagocytosis means because of the activation of the, this system this helps in the engulfment of the bacteria or you can say the killing of bacteria the process is known as phagocytosis or you can say they are causing the microbial lysis they are causing the microbial lysis or you can say the killing of microorganism or you can say bacteria so you you had seen that because uh, of the chemical release of chemical mediator there are several uh, functions okay so this is a short and the brief description regarding the uh, chemical mediators i hope it is helpful Please like, share, subscribe and don't forget to comment on the video. Thank you all.